All right, continuing on, I got a little bit more work done um, and I've concentrated on our control surfaces and uh, started to work on some linkages. So if we start up at the front here, we can see the uh, bow planes. Uh, those are run through, it comes with brass bushings uh, with the kit. Uh, ran them through the inside and then I created these supports on the inside with some wheel collars to make a nice, stable, sturdy um, support on the inside for the dive planes. Uh, moving back here, you can also see that I have laid in some lead shot, some uh, you know lead bearings uh, or balls in the keel. And then what I did is uh, mixed up some epoxy resin uh, poured that in and that's all sealed in there now and that is going to be our ballast to help keep the submarine stable during static operations. Uh, and then of course you can see I've also drilled uh, several holes in the keel for drainage uh, and that's going to allow water obviously to get into the hull uh, when you first put it in there but also for water to exit the hull when the ballast tank is emptying. Um, moving to the back, you can see all of the control surfaces back here have been installed. And, you know, one thing I'm going to note at this point is it's exceptionally important when you're creating, uh, you know, your linkages and control surfaces that they move very, very freely without binding. So this is very, you know, free moving, you can see. There's no stress uh, or anything like that. Uh, and same with the rudders. And the way I set up these linkages, um, you'll see that the dive planes uh, are in the back area there. And they're separate, they're not connected, and neither are the two uh, rudders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run separate control arms out uh, into this section of the boat uh, and then link them together there because you just don't want to have to worry about messing around too much in an enclosed area like this and this upper part of the hull is adhered to the lower this is all permanently bonded now and the last thing is uh, I have installed the brass bushing for the main drive propeller uh, in the back ensuring that it's centered one thing about this kit unfortunately, and I don't know if you can see it uh, here, is the, is the um, actually the cross section is actually uh, an oval. So it's, it's not a perfect circle. Um, so as such, I've had to sand the upper edge down a little bit to make it flush with the, uh, with the propeller, which I'll grab for you here right now. Let's just put this in place. And the drive shaft will obviously need to be cut to length and everything, but uh, get that in place there like that so you can sort of get an idea about how it's going to look so that's kind of the seam that we're dealing with I'm trying to make it flush you know up there very very free um, spinning propeller looking forward to getting everything all uh, connected and getting that uh, going as well it's going to look absolutely gorgeous I love that propeller um, that's pretty well it. That's the progress that I've made uh, here thus far. Um, from this point I think I'm going to put some primer up on the inside of the hull. Uh, and then actually we're going to be moving on to linkages. Okay, as you can see, I've got uh, quite a bit more accomplished on the boat. I've got the uh, interior all primed out got the cylinder in place so that I can work on my linkages uh, as well as the battery to make sure I don't interfere there. Front dive planes uh, have been completed. I've got an adjustable uh, linkage clevis uh, on the front uh, and that's really important to make sure that you build in some adjustability because you uh, are very rarely going to get it right uh, the very first time and of course things change over time you want to be able to adjust that you know back and forth so all of these um, arms are uh, adjustable you can just loosen off this 
uh, set screw there and you can adjust all of the arms. Uh, and again, like I said before, it's, it's a really important thing that you make sure that everything moves very, very smoothly with no binding whatsoever. Um, moving to the back here, uh, I have mounted a little bulkhead uh, made out of aluminum L-channel. I've got my bushing in there for the main drive propeller, mounted my uh, dog bone connector to the drive shaft there, and I've started working on the rear linkages and I got the the light turned on there so you can see how that kinda looks on the inside the dive plane linkage arms are in place and uh, this morning I'm gonna be working on the rudder arms um, talking about these you know control surfaces um, you wanna make sure obviously that the uh, control planes, the, 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 the control surfaces um, are completely parallel to each other. So the rudders are straight up and down. Uh, you know, the dive planes are straight um, parallel to the ground. And the way that I usually do that is I run shaft down the inside of the uh, control or, or of the um, um, appendage. And I run it straight across the model into the other one. And you can see I've got some reference lines scribed out uh, on the inside there. Um, looking on the inside, well maybe you can't see them because I've, I've cut them off, but after you secure the um, uh, appendages there and they're adhered, uh, which I did with some rubber reinforced cyanoacrylate, uh, I just cut off the inside which leaves the uh, inside free and clear. And you can do the same thing with the rudders, but you're, what you're going to do, uh, rather than adhering them obviously to the hull, you're going to rely on those bushings to keep everything nice and parallel. So you run a shaft all the way through. You can slip a 1 8 rod in there and then glue it in. So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be working on the rudder linkages uh, here this morning. And once that's done, we'll probably finish off this chapter. And then we're going to move on to some uh, hull detailing. Okay, as we can see here, uh, linkages are pretty well done. This is the um, dog bone connector, uh, kind of universal drive shaft that I created. And um, the other important thing that we need to do here before we uh, finish up this chapter is balance out the prop. And this is really important because that is a massive solid brass propeller. And uh, when it is out of balance, it will shake the entire model without a problem. So what I got it sitting on there uh, is a prop balancer and that was uh, kind of stolen from my quadcopter. Um, but the idea behind this is we got some very very free flowing uh, free rolling bearings there and I've set the drive shaft on and the idea is if you spin this it should not want to tend to go in one direction or another but as you can see it's got a heavy side and I've got a little mark down there on the bottom. So what I'm actually going to do, being that that is the heavy side of the propeller, I am going to uh, drill out uh, some brass from that part of the propeller, put it back on the shaft and we'll see if we can get it nice and balanced. Alright, so uh, I've excavated out the back of the propeller uh, as you can see there and I use my drill press to do that and I basically kind of Swiss cheese the, the heavy part uh, of the propeller in an effort to balance it out and uh, I'm very happy to say that if we were to take this and put this back on what you see now is the, uh, the tendency for the propeller to just kind of want to stay wherever it ends up without rolling back to a heavy spot. So, balanced uh, ready for installation and theoretically uh, should result in nice smooth uh, operation with no vibration which is actually important because what I find is uh, vibration in these models really causes the auto levelers to go a little bit crazy so I'm gonna get this installed and uh, we'll kinda of fire things up and we'll wrap this chapter up okay here is the uh, finished and uh, assembled 
model. Um, basically where we're at right now, we're going to move on to some cosmetic things uh, and then we're going to do some flotation. But before I do that, I'm going to show you how some of these linkages work. Uh, and before I do that, I just wanted to show you, you can see the little WhatsApp unit there showing current draw, battery voltage and all that kind of stuff. It's a really good thing to have. So let's take a look here about how this is going to going to work. So I got my front dive planes. And you'll notice that the uh, the aft planes are not working. And again, like I said earlier, they're going to be uh, standalone. So they're going to be uh, responsible for keeping this boat on a level keel. Uh, we got some rudder control here. We've got um, some throttle. Now you can hear that's nice and smooth, very little vibration. And then the last thing, of course, is we've got some uh, pitch control. And that's all running through the uh, auto leveler. So that brings this chapter of the build uh, to a close. Again, as always, I thank you for joining me and uh, hopefully you'll join me for the next chapter.